So I'll call to order the Committee of the Whole uh, meeting, and I will ask for a roll call. Thank you. Warren? Here. Berg? Here. Serta present? Groth? Uh, excused. Davis? Excused. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clyunas? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Ryan? Excused. Susha? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhassel? Here. 13 present. Thank you, and we have a quorum. And we will uh, start with item number three, discussion and possible action regarding the changing of North 7th Street and North 9th Street from one way to a two way. If you could start your presentation. Good evening. You know the saying, the more things change, the more they remain the same? Well, that's kind of what's going on here. Uh, we've gone from, a, from an, a time where our city was dense, everybody uh, was in close proximity to each other, people were able to walk to work, people were able to uh, be entertained all within a close area, and then we moved into an era where the freeway came along and started to draw people further away. From there, we, uh, a lot of the industry, a lot of the businesses that were in the downtown area, the residences, all moved out to the suburbs. And now we're starting to see a re-emergent type of development coming back into the downtown where people are starting to come back in again. And tonight, uh, I was going to make a presentation about uh, the 7th and 9th Street conversion from one way to two way. You wanna... Our city grid, it's... let me just hit the lights here. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, this is our downtown area. With 8th Street running up the middle here. 7th Street over here, and 9th Street over here. Okay. When we look at our city, we look at an area of where we're trying to make a living, where we spend our money and where we live. Uh, our central grid system has ma remained intact, but improvements have been made. I went over the, the pre-freeway era, where at one time we uh, had a dense area downtown. And then we moved into the freeway area where, era where we started to move out of the downtown, coming back in again, the post freeway where the businesses started to leave the area, and now we're coming back into an area where we're redeveloping again. In uh, Okay, we're on the matter of perspectives. Uh, we've got uh, an engineer's perspective, the user's perspective, and the business's perspective. And from the engineer's perspective, one-way streets are great for moving, uh, moving people to and from point A to point B, and to do it efficiently and without impacting the safety of our residents. Go ahead. So we're concerned with point-to-point -point travel, our pedestrian crossings, and uh, some of the inefficiencies with one-way streets is that there are multiple turns. There's mul uh, pedestrian conflicts caused by some of the additional turning and uh, increased fuel emissions. From a business perspective, it's okay. one-way streets are okay for the people who know where they're going. But as our community is developing more and more, we're branching out into areas where uh, people are not from familiar with the area and one-way streets are confusing to them. Okay. Users' perspectives, 
Yeah, they're great for commuting. That was great in the 1970s when we uh, needed to get into town just for business and then get back home again. There's minimal delay with one-way streets, but it is inconvenient for the business-to-business -business trips that uh, our tourism area is growing. And there's more turning traffic for pedestrian crossings because not only are you, do you have to go around the block, or I'm sorry, not only can you go from block to block, but you have to go around the block and make several turning movements. Um, we did meet with the businesses. We sent notices out to all the businesses in the area bounded by Pennsylvania Avenue, Erie Avenue, 7th Street, and 9th Street. Uh, we invited them all to the Committee of the Whole meeting this evening. Uh, we received approximately eight phone calls that were all in favor of making the conversion from one-way to two-way streets. Uh, we also met with the businesses at request, and we met with about eight of those businesses and uh, to take into their concerns as to the improvements that would need to be made. Uh, those businesses were in favor of that also. We also received, I received personally one call saying that they weren't in favor of it. Why change anything? But um, it's working the fine the way it is. But we're, what we're trying to do here is, is increase the circulation and livability of our downtown area. Some of the improvements that are going to be made or need to be made necessary for this inter for to make it a two-way street is at the intersection of Erie and 9th, 9th Street. Our proposal is to create a left turn only lane with a dedicated left turn arrow for northbound traffic at Erie Avenue. Uh, this will take some of the, the traffic problems that we have over at 10th Street uh, where we don't have enough room to have a turn lane there and move some of that traffic over to 9th Street so that we were able to allow more, more movement from, oops, Oh dear. There we go. To go from uh, the northbound left out of town. We are projecting that we're going to have to remove parking along the east side of Erie or 9th Street to approximately where the alley is in order to accommodate the through movement and the left turn lanes at that intersection. Further on down on 9th Street at the intersection of Wisconsin Avenue, we did an engineering study at this intersection and determined that the traffic signals were not necessary due to traffic volumes, the type of accidents that were happening there that were low impact, and that uh, the, the traffic volumes just weren't there. So what we did was we met with the school, Trinity Lutheran School here, and asked for their input on this intersection because this is a school crossing. And what we determined to do at this intersection is to create the bump outs so that they only have 24 feet of crossing across 9th Street on both sides here and creating a four-way stop condition at this intersection. And the school is okay with that. At the intersection of New York Avenue, it will remain a two-way stop condition as it currently is. But what we're going to do is put up some mid-block flashers for approaching traffic to warn that the fire station is uh, exiting onto or crossing 9th Avenue or 9th Street. The, uh, the crossings will activate when the, the fire department hits their button to, in an emergency situation so that uh, these, uh, the flashers will come on and indicate that there's going to be a fire vehicle crossing the, the intersection. The intersection of 9th Street and Center Avenue, we also did an engineering study there with traffic counts and determined that most of the, I'm sorry, the, the traffic signals did not warrant, were not warranted at this location uh, due to the low volumes and that a four-way stop condition would also benefit this area. At the intersection of 9th Avenue and, or 9th Street and Pennsylvania Avenue, we are creating a median here to prevent left turning vehicles into the post office and the car dealership that's here on the corner. And uh, there is a possibility 
that we may have to put in a left turn lane going from the uh, eastbound traffic onto northbound here. And there will be some traffic signal improvements uh, at that time also when we do the modifications. Over on 7th and Pennsylvania, again, we're removing the traffic signals here. The, the traffic uh, counts that we took did not warrant the traffic signal at that location. And we're creating a median here to split the traffic for left turning traffic, the through and the right, and to prevent oncoming traffic from going straight through on 7th Street. Up at Center Avenue where there's existing traffic signals, that will become a two-way stop. And we met with the police and fire department to make sure that that was okay with them. And they were fine with the, the location of this. This will allow 7th Street to proceed all the way through up to Niagara Avenue. I'm sorry, Wisconsin. The, uh, there is, this is the U.S. First National Bank, U.S. Bank parking lot. And the city parking lot, I think it's 13. We're going to have to do some modifications to the driveway entrances because currently it is an in only and an out only. So we're going to have to recreate this intersection, the driveway up here, remove this section down here in order to get the traffic in and out. We still have to work out the logistics with transit and how we're going to gate that, but that's one of the improvements that are going to have to be made at this, inter at this parking lot entrance. Up at Wisconsin Avenue, we're going to create a three-way stop. We're going to bump out the intersection here because of the crossings that we have from the, the, senior, the uh, landmark towers, the, uh, the Kohler, uh, that's not where, you know, Kohler's down here, uh, Yonkers. It, it provides a better access back and forth between the residential side of things and the shopping side of things. We put the three-way stop here to stop the traffic so that the pedestrians can get across a little more easily. This is another uh, zoom of this. We are going to have to close off the driveway here and relocate it up here. And uh, this is just another showing of the, the three-way stop at that intersection. The last intersection is up at Erie. Those signals will also be removed to create a four-way stop. And uh, the through movement will be able to continue on north and south through this intersection. Uh, so it should be an improvement to this area. The costs and recommendations. The, the cost for this is conversion would be approximately $70,000 in hard concrete work. Uh, some of this work will be bid with the 2007 resurfacing program, and a part of this will be in the Department of Public Works uh, with the electrical and some striping and signing uh, conditions. And we wanted to recommend approval of this ordinance to convert a seventh, the 7th and 9th Street to two-way. And uh, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Do any of the aldermen have questions? Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, could you go over the uh, changes around the post office again? Uh, to the post office, um, possibly creating a left turn lane on Pennsylvania Avenue, turning on to 9th Street to go northbound, and there'll be some traffic signal modifications there. Will, 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 will there be access uh, into the post office parking lot like there is now for that drive through mailbox and to park in the lot and go into the front of the post office? Yes, That'll please. still be there. Yeah, the same circulation pattern that is there now for the post office where you have to enter off of 10th Street, come around the block, and into the parking lot will still be there. Okay. And that's the, the primary route that anyone would be using for the post office. We didn't want to have uh, vehicles 
wanting to turn into there because it would create a traffic backup at that intersection. So the traffic circulation, we, we met with the post office and that's what their recommend, our recommendation was to them and they approved that. If, if I could just follow up. Uh, and then also, uh, you mentioned you talked to a number of businesses in the area. Uh, what percentage of the businesses would you say are in favor of making the change? And then did you also consult with uh, residential property owners about their feelings on the change? The, all the businesses that we contacted and we had contact with were in favor of doing the, the conversion. Okay. The residential area, we did send out notices to all of the, the properties, residential and commercial, and we didn't receive any comments back, or I didn't personally. Ryan might have, but uh, for, for the conversion, I, it, I think it just makes it a better, more convenient for everyone to, to have a two-way street out there for the residences. But you didn't get any negative comments back from residential or, or business? Everybody was on board? Everybody was on board that has talked to me or has submitted uh, communication to us. The, Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Montemar. Um, thank you, Chairman Vanderweel. I think the, the engineering department has done a good job with this. It really does lay out lots of good information. And I know at the public protection and safety meeting, Mr. Sazma let us know that he had sent out a lot of letters. And he also let us know that it was very few, I mean like one or two, that said they don't want it to be done. Now, I did receive one telephone call from one gentleman who did want it to continue. He's not a person in, in this downtown area at all, so that the people could get through the city more quickly, which is the purpose of the one way. However, I think now the purpose is that they don't get through the city quickly, that it is slower, that it's much easier to maneuver downtown, and especially for tourists coming here, visitors coming here, and even just us. Well, I love the words about less emission. So thank you very much for doing your work. Thank you. Uh, President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Outside of the parking utility, will any of the budding property owners be subject to a special assessment? Thank you. OK, thank you. Alderman Clay Hunas. Uh, thank you. I have two questions. Um, Will we lose parking downtown because of some of these adjustments uh, to corners or in, uh, that kind of thing? Will there be parking lost on okay. the street? Yes, there will be a net overall parking loss on the streets. A net, uh, on did the, you say? On the streets. Okay. Loss. You don't know how many, though, huh? There was uh, eight up at the intersection of Erie and Knight. I'd have to count them all up, but okay. I would say in the range of 10 to 15 spaces. Okay. And that's on the streets themselves. On the streets right. Themselves. Okay. The next question is curious what do you do with all the stoplights you don't use anymore? Are those going to, can you recycle those or are those things that become obsolete or do we have other plans for stoplights somewhere else in town that we could just replant them somewhere else or? Well, there always seems to be a, a need to grow new stoplights. Uh huh. Uh -huh. In the winter times, so okay. <laughs> okay. I guess so. All right, thank you. Alderman Kittleson. Mm, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just wondering, Bill, say this were to be approved, how long would this conversion take to do? I mean, would it a month, two months? I mean, how long would that, do you know, approximately? Well, Wouldn't take long? If we set it out as a resurfacing project this summer, it would be in the mid-summer range. It should take about a month to get the concrete work done at that time. Okay. The DPW will be working to get the signage and the striping and the traffic signals down. So I would say in the range of a month to two months. That could be done. Summer. Okay. And and then the other question is, you said approximately seventy thousand dollars. To yeah. it, this is in the budget money for this, or that it's, would? Yeah, it's, it's in part of the resurfacing program. In the resurfacing program. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I did talk to uh, several of the downtown merchants and I got very favorable feedback. I was concerned about the Yonkers docks because they're in line right now with a one-way and I talked to the manager and they're very excited to have the two-way traffic. They think it'll be better for their business. I also received a call from um, apartment manager 
uh, that runs or maybe owns one of the apartments downtown and he thought it also would be beneficial that he'd be able to rent out his apartments more easily by having two-way traffic so I did only receive one phone call and that was this morning of one resident against it so I have to say that more pros were coming in more positives about this change and I appreciate that um, but when the Michigan Avenue project was complete I did receive a couple of calls from uh, the merchants in that area ask, asking why we put up four-way stop signs. I think we took out some stop lights and we just automatically put the four-way stop signs up and they felt that initially too many people were just blowing right through them on Michigan Avenue. They didn't even see them. And I'm wondering, I know that it's a number of cars have to go through an intersection to warrant a stoplight and I would assume there's a number of cars that have to go through to warrant a four-way stop. Do we have any of the, the places where you're talking about putting in the four-way stops, are any of those eligible of going down to two-way stops? The, the traffic volumes that we had looked at at the intersection for four-way stops were volumes that had almost equal volumes. And due to the pedestrian crossings that we have down here at Center Avenue, uh, we felt that uh, a four-way stop was more warranted than a two-way stop just to get people across the street here. There's a lot of people that go over to the, the Wasserman apartments over here. The bus station and back and forth again. So we wanted to keep that available for them to cross a little more easily. Uh, the I think that all the stop signs as four ways that are presented here tonight are, are warranted and I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend going down to two way stops. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Recchi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as long as I can remember, and I think this happened in the sixties, probably a few years old when they changed them into the one way streets. How are we going to, and I, I, I like this idea of going two-way, how are we going to educate the public to this? Um, for many years, and especially since the Plaza 8 days, and myself included, I'm used to the, the two-way or the one-way streets around the downtown. How are we going to educate them as to the fact that from Penn to Erie on 7th and 9th that we're now two-way traffic? Uh, is there any plan in place on how to get that out, say uh, display at the library or something of that nature? Because this is... That's the only problem I can see is, is getting everybody educated in that because I, to this day, I mean, I still have a problem with going north on 9th Street from Erie Avenue. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't sink into this minute. Right. Yeah, we're going to be a, doing a pretty extensive public outreach program this, to, uh, to get everybody involved. Uh, when, when it comes down to actually putting up the, or converting the signs, I would say probably we will be running some variable message boards indicating that uh, the sign that will be changing within one week, two weeks, three weeks ahead of time so that the people that commute back and forth all the time will be notified of that. Uh, the people that come here right off the bat, you know, they're not going to notice anything different. But uh, you're right, we have to hit those commuters, we have to hit the people that come through here every day, and it's, it's going to be hard to change a force of half, habit. Uh, up on, uh, when we converted 7th and 9th Street, up on, from Michigan to Erie Avenue, the same problem that you brought up, you know, people are still doing it today. They're, they're driving down the wrong way. And uh, it's, it's going to be a change that's going to take time, just like the one ways did. Go ahead. If, if I may just follow up, a creature of habit, I still stop westbound in Michigan Avenue at 13th Street, and that stop sign has been gone for years already. It's just a creature of habit. What is the timeline on, on doing this uh, by the end of the summer, or what's your hope? We'd like to have everything ready by the end of summer before school starts. Thank you, and on that I have a question. Penn to Erie is going to be a two-way, and then Penn Avenue to where is going to be a one-way? Uh, Pennsylvania Avenue to the south uh, to 8th Street will be one-way, and it, it will remain the same. Everything south of Pennsylvania will remain as it is, one-way. Thank you. Right, the swings. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Bill, could you just explain, do you foresee any major business stoppages as a result of the construction process? I mean, Michigan Avenue got a lot of publicity in that respect, and I'm just hoping we don't cause too much stress on the local businesses. No, most of the, the construction that will be done, especially with the concrete work, will be done one side at a time. And we make sure, we'll make sure that the entrances to the parking lots are open before we start tearing into something else. The uh, I wouldn't foresee any, any stoppages. Uh, we work with the businesses to make sure that they know when the, the driveways will be closed or we'll leave half open at a time. We, we'll make sure that they get in there. There won't be any problems. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Um, I'm just kind of concerned about the um, farmer's market at um, Fountain Park. I know they have been using the 9th Street for unloading and they have been parking their vehicles along there. Um, do we have any plans in talking to the farmer's market to explain to them what's going to happen and I don't know, are we going to let them unload or are they just going to have to use the other three um, roads? Yeah, we, we spoke with the person who had that up. I, I don't remember what his name was, but we met with him and explained the plan up there by 9th Street and, and Erie Avenue. He's, he said that, you know, that's the way it's got to be, and he'll work around it. If I can add, just add, yeah, the, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, um, Bob Holland from the Sheboygan County Interfaith who run, kind of runs the farmer's market. We've spoke with him, and what we, we last year we didn't utilize A Street because it was under construction, and because of the removal of parking on 9th Street, they thought they'd utilize Erie and then try to utilize A Street this year as part of their vending operation. So he, he seemed to be amiable to that and looking at it and working with us, And but... Um, so it looks like it could be a good a good fit for them, especially with A Street being kind of more prominent area with the water feature and that. Thank you. Um, thank you. I know that along the ways when we were talking about the development of the Highland House and the development of the Kepsel Building, there was conversation about moving the farmer's market down there to the new plaza area once that's up and running, and I think that would even be more successful. Is that going to be happening within the next two years? Uh, maybe I, I, I think Paulette is here. I know we, I know that has been discussed of potential happening. Uh, it all depends on I guess how fast that development takes off in that area. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that warrants looking into in the future. All right. Thank you. Is there any other questions from the alderman? Alderman Montemayor. Um, thank you, Chairman Vanderwell. Um, I move that the Committee of the Whole send a favorable recommendation to the Common Council. Second. I have a motion and a second. I know, I'm catching it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye, motion passes. Thank you for the presentation. Alderman Verhassel, can we turn the lights on, please? Thank you. Next on the agenda is item number four, communication number 906 from Tabitha Steinbach, asking if there has been any dialogue with the Common Council regarding the DSL coverage in the city of Sheboygan. I, I have spoke with uh, Ms. Steinbach, and after there was the article in the paper, she was able to get DSL. So I, I guess if we want DSL quicker, we maybe need to complain to the phone company. Otherwise, I know the city's working on it to get more DSL in, uh, in other areas. Is there any other discussion? Second. I have a motion by Alderman Racky to file and a second. If there's no other discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye, motion passes. Next on the agenda is communication number 90607. Sorry. We did that one already. Uh, item number five, communication number 930607 from Herman Leonard stating that he is opposed to the possibility of changing the mayor's status to an appointment position or a manager's position because a taxpayer and a citizen of Sheboygan, he believes all citizens should have the right to vote and elect their choice of mayor. And we already took care of this. Second. Motion to file by Alderman Hanna and second. Alderman Racky, discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Leonard is a constituent of mine, and I left a message for him this morning uh, telling him that number five, items number five and six were going to be discussed tonight, and I, I invited him if he wanted to make any comments. I have not met Mr. Leonard personally, so I don't know if he's here or not. Is Mr. Leonard here tonight? I don't believe he is. Okay, thank, thank you. you. 
Is there any other discussion on the motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Triple tie, motion passes. Next on the agenda is item number six, communication number 940607 from Herman Leonard stating that he proposes that any city elder person cannot hold a position on the county board at the same time as being an elder person as this is a conflict of interest. Motion, motion to file in a second. Any other discussion? Alderman Susha. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, last week there was a joint meeting between Salary and Grievance and the Civil Service Commission, and after reviewing the Civil Service guidelines, um, there is a segment in there that says that when you are an elected official that you cannot hold an office in any other uh, elected position. So mm -hmm. I think it is already in the Civil Service guidelines, it's just that we weren't aware of it in the past. Okay, thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, seeing that we have this information, who is to enforce this? Because we have had a situation where we've had an older person sitting on council and on the county board. Who, who's in charge of, of enforcing this? Someone can look into. Maybe uh, Alderman Susha mentioned Ed Surik and Human Resources. So, Alderman Racky. Hey, Mr. Chairman, my question is: would be, is that a state law that prohibits that, or is that just a local law that would prohibit that? Alderman Susha. Uh, that was just in the rules and regulations of the Civil Service Commission. I don't know if it's a state law. I know that locally that is what the Civil Service Commission has adopted. Thank you. Wouldn't that be something then, Mr. Chairman, should be taken up with the State Elections Board to make sure that we're proper in that? That's something we should look into as, as all the people. On the board. Uh, would it be appropriate to uh, uh, refer Mr. Herman's doc, uh, Mr. Leonard's document to uh, salary and grievances to get you know, to get a legal opinion on that and then refer it back again? I was just wondering if that would be appropriate. If, if this committee would agree to it, we can make that into a motion. Alderman Racky. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would make a motion we refer this to the Civil Service Commission. I have a motion to refer to the Civil Service Commission. Second. In a second. Discussion regarding the motion to refer. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Sure, will aye. Motion passes. Next on the agenda is item number seven, RO number 3170607 oh, by the finance director submitting a report clarifying the council authority under the state tax levy limit controls. This is just something we never took care of in the past. Move to file. Second. Motion and second to file. Is there any, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Item number eight is a copy of RO number 4530607 oh, by the city clerk submitting a communication from elder person born with an article entitled, City Should Be More Del Deliberate About Financing Tools. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this uh, document came before finance some time ago and Besides the article that I submitted, uh, Paulette Enders did an uh, extensive report on uh, tax and incre incremental financing districts, and Rich Gebhardt also discussed it. And I would like to refer this to the uh, Committee of the Whole of the New Council. Uh, I believe with the number of new aldermen we maybe will be, will be coming on board with the New Council, that this would, if not be an entire meeting of a Committee of the Whole, I think it would be good for Paulette and Rich to give the same presentation to the rest of the council because uh, uh, TIF districts are sometimes misunderstood or not fully understood and I think this especially with new people coming on the council would make for an interesting presentation for the council. Okay. So I'd like to refer this to the uh, committee of the whole of the uh, new council. Thank you. Make I a motion to that effect. Second. I have a motion and a second to refer to the new committee of the whole council. Under discussion, Alderman Hanna? Yes, I just, uh, it was an excellent article that Alderman Bourne referred to us and also the work that Paulette did. I would hope that we could have that, the article and Paulette's follow-up report on our website 
Because I think it is a commonly misunderstood concept, and I think it's a nice, they treated the, uh, the material in a complete fashion. So if I don't know whether Sue Richards is the in charge of making sure documents get up there, but if we can make sure that that one gets up there, it'd be great. I'll talk to Paulette and Sue Richards, see what we can do about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there any, any other discussion on the motion to refer? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Next on the agenda is item number nine, RO number 5340607, by the city clerk submitting a communication from Gerald Miller stating his upset with the opposition to the Grand City Hotel being built in the South Pier District. Is Mr. Miller here tonight? All right, is there any discussion on this item? Alderman Susha? Um, I'll move to file. Second. Motion and second to file. And then under discussion, um, I think what we have here is we have a, a taxpayer who's on a fixed income who wasn't happy with um, the thought that the city had about not allowing Grand State to come in here because if you bring in more development, that should increase the tax base, which would ultimately reduce property taxes. And what it says in his letter is that his uh, property taxes um, still went up $487, even though supposedly the city froze the levy. And um, we'll file this tonight, but I would ask that um, when the new council is put, set, perhaps the next committee the chair, uh, the committee of the whole chairperson could have Marie Ellis uh, come back in and explain to us how the reassessment was done because I don't thoroughly understand it and I've asked a lot of questions and I don't know how we can expect the residents to understand how the reassessment was done. So I would hope that that would be a topic of a future committee of the whole meeting. Sounds good. Thank you. I will communicate with the next committee of the whole chair. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Number 10 on the agenda is RC number 5410506 by the Committee of the Whole regarding RO number 5990506 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Gina Steinert stating the concerns of her and her neighbors regarding the faulty camera in Sheridan Park and the fact that this issue is not being addressed by the Committee on Public Protection and Safety. Motion to file. Second. Motion to second to file. This, this item was from the last Committee of the Whole and um. I see that Gina Steiner is here. I'm going to give her the opportunity to speak on her, mm -hmm. on her communication. If you'd like to come forward. Does she need her history? Thank you for letting me speak on this. Um, <clears throat> I knew it would probably be quick to be motion to file because. It's the third year that we're trying to get this issue addressed. The reason why we brought it up, my neighborhood um, and some of um, the people in the area have been concerned because when there was a child, I'm not sure how old he was, he was down at the land park, either fell, pushed, whatever, into the lake. The camera down there, too, is only a live feed. They did not ever find out exactly what happened to that um, boy down there whether he was killed, committed suicide, or what. And the mother was very upset. She had called one of my neighbors. That's why she had said, you know, it's not a good thing to have these cameras that are supposed to be a threat when they don't actually record, they don't actually perform the duties that you would think a camera would do because um, financing, I guess. And um, the problem being that you know, yeah, some people say that Sheridan Park's so safe and all that. Well, you know, they don't live there. They don't know this for a fact. We just had police there last week with some gang situations. We do have gangs that live right next to the park. I don't want to see another child killed before something happens. And I just don't think it's right that we should have cameras that are supposedly a threat, but they don't actually work other than a live feed. And the police have much more important things to do than just sit there and watch a screen all day to make sure that nothing's going on. And really, I've already looked into this. It's only going to cost between $2,500 and $3,000. Paulette Enders said that we do qualify for a block grant for this reason. So if someone forwards this on to get um, a block grant done, looked into, that can be paid for. Otherwise, if there's some business people out there that do care about the safety of the Sheridan Park area, we could sure use that extra financing. 
only three thousand dollars we've already spent over a hundred thousand on playground equipment and street signage and all this other improvements putting a camera in will ensure that the vandals and um, gangs won't be able to just get away with wrecking it all again and not being caught doing it plus it'll ensure that when our kids go there that they're protected, that the gangs can't just follow them home and there won't be any problems that arise from it. And, you know, I know that there are some of you that just don't agree with that, and that's just fine. But I live there. There's a lot of us, my, my neighbors that live there, and we've come to many meetings before this. I really don't want to get into an argument about what's safe and what isn't safe. The point is, it's just a little bit of money and it'll be solved, and then I won't be driving you crazy for another three years bringing the same issue up. So I really like to get it resolved sooner or later. Thank you. Thank you, and we've, uh, you can sit down if you like. Okay. If it, we've looked at this in public production safety, and in committee I said if a, if a business would give us money to put these cameras up, I would like to see us have cameras like Milwaukee or Chicago does, where the intelligent cameras along the lake, along the riverfront, and in parks where we have problems, but it all comes down to money. And I guess I'd ask Paulette, I know we were looking into it about the community block grant, and uh, that staff member has left. Do you have any information on that? Okay. Thank you. Um, we, we did discuss this item in the Naming Rights Committee because we talked about funding avenues. Because it's Sheridan Park and it's a low-income neighborhood, it could potentially be an eligible activity, but I think it was Tom Holton that was looking at it, and um, I think there was, he was going to make some kind of contact with the individual that's in charge of the police department and their um, electronics, and I'm not quite sure if that ever occur occurred. So, I, you know, because it's not as simple as just a, a camera. You know, is it, do you record the information? Um, as Gina had mentioned, you know, are you watching a camera 24-7? You can't just put up a camera and then how many locations. So we were looking for some type of technical advice, and I, I don't know if that's ever been received. All right. Thank you. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I can feel for Ms. Steiner because this has been a hot potato for it seems like a two going on three years here now, and I think as a council and a committee of the whole, I think we just need to take some action on it and get some activity going. We're only talking between two and $3,000 from all the estimates that I've heard. I think we just need to make that investment. We've, as Gina pointed out, we've invested over $100,000, upwards of $300,000 in that entire area surrounding the park, and I think between two and $3,000 is a small investment to give us a little insurance on what we've already stuck in. So I don't know if we need to make a motion to authorize them, the planning department to utilize CDBG funds, or where are we at with this? What do we need, what do we need to do, I guess, to make action? I think it needs to go to finance with a favorable recommendation from this committee. If you would like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to refer this to finance. Second. I have a motion and a second to refer to finance. So discussion regarding the camera referring it to finance. Alderman Clayhonis. Oh, um, I, I guess my questions were operationally, how could this be monitored? Because a camera is effective as long as somebody's looking through it and um, or there's some record of activity. So um, I would hope that, that that could be looked into as well as to whether it's a citizen's effort uh, if the police uh, don't have the time, and I can understand that, that it does take time just to stand and, or sit and look at monitors, um, that maybe there's some citizen action that could be done on this on a volunteer basis or something. But I do think there's a lot to this. If we take on the responsibility of monitoring activity with a camera, you also have to take on the responsibility of tracking that and recording it and keeping records of you know, the different days and things like that. It becomes quite a responsibility uh, and just not setting up a camera on a roof. The, the last, thank you, Alderman. The, the last discussion I had on this involved a camera with a DVD in it that would record 12 or 18 hours, and then somebody would have to constantly change the DVD. And, and that's as far as it would be with, with staff. We'd have to figure out who'd be in charge of that. Uh, Alderman Susha. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will be voting no to refer this document um, to finance tonight because I feel that it's it's not the proper uh, way to handle it. I think that being that this letter came in uh, a year and a half ago or whenever, we've talked about it already, I believe, in public protection and safety several times. It's gone to finance several times. We now have the Park and Forestry Committee reactivated, and I think the recommendation should come from them because I don't think we can sit here and say Sheridan Park is the only park or the most deserving park for this type of technology. And I think it should really come from the Park and Forestry Commission with the recommendation after they talk to the police department in regards to the monitoring and things like that. So, so I'm going to vote no to refer it because I think it should be filed. Not to say the issue should be dead, but I think it should come from the Park and Forestry Commission. Thank you, Alderman Swisha. Alderman Meyer, did this go through Parks and Forestry? Or? Not, um, not to be discussed to put a, a camera in. I think at the time, um, the money issue was there. And I would have to agree with Alderman Shusha. Um, I think we need to prioritize the parks. Um, in 2005, Sheridan Park had 13 calls to that area, but none of them are in the park. It's the area around the park. And I know there are a couple other parks like N Park and Roosevelt Park that have an extreme amount of vandalism. And I, I support we should file this. The issues can be looked at in park and forestry, and they need to be prioritized as to which parks truly need this type of surveillance. All right. Thank you. President Berg? Ah, yes. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe when this came through public protection and safety, the opinion of the staff of police department, although was that this could be helpful, but they didn't see this as a cr critical addition. And I think many of their comments essentially mirrored the comments that are made tonight, that if you're going to be looking at using cameras, you need to have some level and sense of prioritizing rather than just putting them in, in one particular place. And I guess that's where I would take issue with the referral to finance. The, it, you can find the dollars, perhaps, but just because you uh, put the dollars there, does that necessarily mean that's the best plan, given that we are building a new police department? we are likely going to have some level of uh, ability to uh, do some uh, transmission uh, directly. And again, if you have a matter like this, do you uh, really have several cameras feeding into one large hard drive or a special server? I think there are some technical issues that, that for me, go beyond putting a camera in a park and then somebody retrieving a DVD at the end of the day and, and things like this. So I think it's a larger issue. So I'm going to uh, vote against the referral to uh, finance. Thank you, President Berg. Alderman Hassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I'd compare this to a situation if we bought a brand new car and then we don't take out the insurance. If we're very vulnerable. We just stuck in, like I said, almost $300,000, $350,000 in that entire area, $100,000 in that park alone. I don't argue that there are worse areas in the city. I mean, End Park is another example. You can go out there right now. We stuck a lot of money in that park a few years ago, and it's constantly going downhill with graffiti, um, damage to the bathrooms, and so on. So. I'm not arguing that Sheridan Park is the worst situation, but I think we've, it has the potential to be, and we've got brand new equipment going in there as we speak. So I think we should spend the two, three thousand dollars. I think it's a fairly inconsequential amount of money considering what we've already spent. We just want to protect what we've got in there. So, and again, I'd be for any public financed area of green space that needs some sort of protection. I'd be for putting cameras in all those areas. And again, just to clarify, we're not talking about replacing the camera so much as adding a recorder, if it could be retrofitted, if we need to buy a new camera, I think the discussion is a camera with a recorder. But if we could put a recorder on our existing camera, I think that's all we would need. Um, and this document was in Park and Forestry, I believe, about two years ago back when Park and Forestry, um, when I was chair of Park and Forestry a few years ago. And it, again, it was, I kind of call it a hot potato. It's been passed around all the place. And I think we just need to take some action. It's a fairly small amount of money, and I think it's a wise use of money. All right, thank you. And also at M Park now we're putting in a splash pad. So I, I do agree with the conversation, some of the conversation that you know we're just just one park, and that's why I've always thought that if some businesses would come together and give us some money to put it in several parks, or if the police would prioritize, say, well, these are the five most dangerous parks, or by the riverfront, and that's the direction I've, I've been leaning the whole time, Alderman Racky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with uh, President Berg. We have a new police station going up. We're going to have to be putting new communications equipment into that police station. You're talking inconsequential two, three thousand dollars, but we start talking two, three thousand this park, two, three thousand that park. 
I think what we need to do is send it to the Park and Forestry Commission, have them work with you know, the police and get the numbers of which parks are the most needed parks to have this, this set up, and then talk with Russ Schreiner, our communications guy, and our IS department to come up with the most feasible solution as to how to address all those parks at one time. Because you start two, 3,000 here, two, 3,000 there, if we buy ourselves a large enough server, and the proper amount of equipment, we could probably have that right here in this building. We don't have to send somebody out to change the DVDs. So, I mean, that's that's the, that's the what we need to look at. So I'm going to vote against going to the Finance Committee simply because it should be studied back at Park and Forestry with first the numbers of the calls to the parks and then work with IS and, and the rest of the people to come up with a, a solution that's going to be cost-effective for everybody and see if we can't work it in with a new police station. Thank you, and, and it's good that we had discussion. It's good discussion on the subject. Ms. Steinart, I saw you had your hand up. Would you like to comment on what we just discussed? I just wanted to say that it would be great if we could pass it on to a committee with a recommendation like you were just saying about doing a study so that way it will be addressed so that there will be action taken on it. Because like Paula had said, we do qualify for a grant. We're not asking that this money be taken away from the police department or something like that. Plus, I do want to see this in more parks. I don't think that Sheridan Park is more important than anybody else's. It's just where I live. But it's just that you know, we need to move forward, not just keep killing it, filing it, and I'm going to keep bringing it back because I want my kids safe. So do my neighbors. So do a lot of other people in the city. And what happened at DeLand Park should never happen again. So I'm just saying let's move forward. Like you said, send it on to a committee to take some action. Please don't let it get filed and let it just die, and then I'll, me or one of my neighbors is just going to bring it right back up again. It's just going to keep sticking around as an issue and as a thorn in your side because we really want to see something positive happen with this. And like you said, if it's part of the police department and it's worked in, that would be great because there is the technology out there. It doesn't have to be a DVD changed at the park every day. There's much better technology out there now. So all you need to do is look into it. So I appreciate your recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Clayhunas. I Thank you. Gina, are you working on the block grant? Are you filing that? I can't. You can't? It has to be recommended from one of you. Wait, can, can we use the mics and not go back and forth? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Um, if, if you just could. Yeah, I just think, you know, I mean, I want to encourage her to use the, the city, you know, <coughs> avenues to do this, to follow through on this, and that, you know, it's because you're a citizen of the city. Right. You should I mean, be I able to, to and yeah. I asked about it, but I personally am just a citizen. I think it has to go from all the person to that department, okay. maybe it was given to that department, like she said, when <coughs> Tom Holton left, it was just kind of hung up, so, but okay. I personally don't have that kind of power, I wish okay. I could. Okay. Paula? I think I'd just like to say that I agree with the recommendation that it would go to Parks and Forestry and they would look at, you know, I hate to use the word study again, but look at really what are the costs because you can say one of the, and it's, there are a few parks that are low to moderate income. Is it eligible? Yes. Could we use neighborhood improvements? Yes. But I don't think it's just this 2000 to 2500 It's It's a larger number if you want to do it right. And I think someone... You know, the police department, um, I guess, should assist in that analysis. Thank you. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderperson Verhassel, would you consider um, amending your motion and having it refer to Park and Forestry so we can have some of these questions addressed? Um, yeah, I, I would consider it. I am concerned, though, would, they, would Park and Forestry have the technical... Um, know how to come back with any sort of recommendation saying what sort of equipment is necessary and so on. I'm, I'm not sure what kind of opinion we're looking for from park and forestry. You know, if we're looking for technical information as to cost, size of the camera, the amount of recording capabilities, is that the right committee to be sending it to? I think from park and forestry we'd be looking at, at where to put the camera. Like, They'd have to probably get advice from the police, advice from the the technical people 
uh, the chairman would have to call him in. And, uh, and, and that's my opinion right now. <coughs> Vice President Serna. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And if um, Ms. Steinhardt could take the, some of the questions that we had and maybe partnership that with this communication to Park and Forestry, we can get those questions addressed. All right. Alderman Hanna. Uh, whatever committee gets it, I hope that they coordinate with the school district. The school district, unfortunately, has an expertise in cameras uh, and surveillance. And so let's work with the liaison officers and work with they've, they've had the misfortune of investing in cameras that didn't provide quality images, and that's not worth the money. If you're going to do it, it's one of those things that if you do it, you need to do it correctly. So wherever this ends up, make sure they, uh, they bring the school district into the loop. Maybe there's an opportunity to purchase together. Who knows? Thank you. And Alderman Hanna, you're absolutely right. A while ago, a detective told me that if you have cameras, it's only as good for investigative work if you can tell who's on it. If it's all grainy, you can't see anything to begin with. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think Park and Forestry would be the place to start with this. At least we could get some numbers, um, like they said, from the police department, find out which parks are, are in need of this type of equipment. And this might be a wonderful opportunity to also share with other facets in the city, like the school, school system. Um, we don't have the technical knowledge in park and forestry to say this is the kind of camera we need, but I think it would be a really good start, and I don't believe it. it's not going to be just filed, and, and I think this is something we really need to pursue. After last year, all the vandalism that went on at End Park, I just think this definitely is something we need to look into, and, but we do need to prioritize the parks, and it is a big expense, and you know, I think referring this to Park and Forestry would be a good start. All right, thank you. Did we have an amended motion or no? I'll agree with that. I'll amend my second. Alderman member Hassel and Alderman Hanna agreed to amend the motion. To Park and Forestry Committee. To send it to Park and Forestry Committee. Okay. All right, Alderman Susha. Thank you. Um, I will still vote no to send this to Park and Forestry because the scope of this letter is only specific to Sheridan Park. And I think that being that this has been uh, out there for so long, the proper thing to do tonight is to file the document and come in fresh with a new document looking at all of the parks. To use this letter as a springboard, um, I don't think that's the appropriate thing. It needs to come in with a fresh perspective. Somebody needs to do the research, perhaps a joint meeting between the new Public Protection Safety and the Park and Forestry Commission might be warranted. But to utilize this letter, it's been floating out there too long and then it's going to sit in that committee for another six months or so before finally something will happen. I mean, by the time you are done dealing with this one document, you're going to have maybe the turnover of the council two, three times yet. So I would suggest that we file this document tonight, but that does not mean this issue is dead. We obviously need to look into this further. So for that reason, I will vote no on referring this particular document to Park and Forestry. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Racky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I agree with all the person Susha, but is it possible to draft a resolution from the floor of this committee to send to the Park and Forestry directing just such a study and to work with the IS and, and the communications people in the police department? I believe we can do that, but it'd be difficult. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm just going to take lights as we go, and we'll, we'll think about that. Go ahead. I was going to say, I can, I'll write it up and bring it in for the next council meeting, and just, just that way, as, as we discussed it, as I, as I brought it out, and we can send it on from there to the new council, to the Park and Forestry Commission, just get it going. All right. I think that's going to be a lot cleaner and a lot easier, and it's going to address the entire issue instead of just the one as all the person Sush was, was referring to. So you're suggesting that we that we say no to referring this to Parks and Forestry, and then you will come in? I have a resolution draft up tomorrow and bring that in for the next council. So then on, uh, on Tuesday the 4th, we would, we would see a resolution? Wednesday the 4th, yeah. Wednesday, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Vice President Serna. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Um, just courtesy to the citizen, Ms. Steinhardt. I understand the concerns that it's been in committee. This is, I guess, proof that it's been in the committee for some time. I don't think it's going to hurt just to forward this on. Um, we've had some good discussion here, and I think it's commendable that Alderperson Racky is willing to um, go ahead and um, bring those suggestions forward, and again, just partnership that with this communication. It's not going to hurt. It's going to. We're listening to the citizens, and I think it's important that we um, keep their best interests at mind. Thank you, Vice President Serta. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we do have the chairperson, uh, Commissioner um, uh, Montemayor here, and I would like to open the floor to him, and maybe he could speak on this. That's fine. We don't need a motion if you would like to come up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this, this did go through the uh, Parks and Forestry Commission, did come up, we went through the discussion since we uh, recreated the board. And uh, the uh, camera that, that Mr. Steinhardt is talking about will cost in approximately about $40,000, that kind of a system. Because if you're going to do it, you need to do it right. And the Sheridan Park area uh, keeps coming up because it's not in that park we're having the trouble at, at the present moment. We're having the problem at other parks also. The biggest one, and, and Alderman House is right, we're sticking a lot of money into the Sheriff Park uh, area right now. But one of the things that's nice things about it, we hadn't had no vandalism since we started putting that equipment in, since uh, we put it, all that play equipment, which is a knock on wood. <laughs> it's great. Uh, the end park uh, situation right after that, facility was open, the bathroom facility, they graffitied that thing and that cost us a lot and they still continue to this day. So then Mrs. Steinhardt's uh, idea is, is correct. We need to, <clears throat> to uh, put more security into this. We need to put some teeth, but we need to do it right. Uh, putting a cheap camera in there with a DVD recorder is not going to do it. You have to be able to identify the culprits in these areas. Um, I think, first of all, the, the commission, the, com uh, the Park and Forest Commission, and it's not a law enforcement commission. I think before this would come to the commission, you need to refer this to some law enforcement authority. Okay, I would ask for you to have uh, Chief Kirk make you out a plan how much a camera like that or cameras would cost, give you an idea of how much of his budget would have to be increased to do this because they would have the authority to do it because they are the law enforcement part of this community. I think that's where this belongs. Then it would go to public uh, works, uh, public protection and safety. And then you could go guide it from then. And then you can bring it back to uh, the commission with our uh, recommendations. We are an advisory commission, so we have no authority other than that. Thank you. Thank you. And this was already in public protection safety, and it was the feeling of the chief that when you're talking about that kind of money, that he has a lot of other places it can go. And when his people are called, they go. And we have a camera that it has a live feed, but his feeling was it'd be great, but he doesn't, he can't afford to take money out of his budget to pay for it. So that's why it was filed in public protection safety a while ago. And we seem to be going around in circles. <laughs> Alderman member Hassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, depending on the type of vandalism, I suppose one incident could pay for the camera, but I, as far as the funding is concerned, I guess I'd like to ask Paulette, if it were the $40,000 that Mr. Montemore just stated, would we still have access to the CDBG funds for that level of funding? Uh, while we're waiting for Ms. Enders to come up, this has gone around circles in public protection safety too, and that's why it comes down to if we had two, $300,000, we'd say, okay, let's do it. And that's why sometime I hope that maybe we'll get the money. Go ahead. Well, and it's just, it's a matter of priorities because what you do is you have, you know, X amount of dollars that's available for neighborhood improvements. And so you're just potentially taking it away from a different project. And I think that's why it's critical that you 
come up with some real costs. You know, what, what will it cost to do it the right way? You know, and then, and then you can take a look at how will that impact your, the black, black grant dollars that we have available. So is the money there? Yes, it is. Is that what, you know, do you want to put all your eggs in one basket? That would be the other question. Thank you. Uh, President Brown. I'll move to call the question. Question has been called. I'm just going to ask for a voice vote. All in favor of calling the question. Is that legal? Can I do that? Yeah, do it through its vote. Okay. All in favor of calling the question, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, the question has been called. The uh, Alderman Serta, would you be able to, or Vice President Serta, repeat the motion? This is a motion to refer um, this document to Park and Forestry. All right. All in favor? Would you like for me to do a roll? Let's do a roll. Okay, just in case. Boren? Berg? No. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? No. Manny? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Susha? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhassel? Aye. Four eyes? Nine no's. Motion fails. The motion fails. Now we have a motion to file. Alderman Susha. That's what I was going to say, motion to file. Motion, well, let's take that as a new motion. Motion to file. Could I have a second? Second. Okay. Oh, any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair sure, votes aye. Motion filed. Oh, I say no, but. <laughs> oh, any opposed? That's okay. That's I'm sorry, me. I should have That's asked. That's all right. Alderman Serta opposed. That's okay. <laughs> Well, I messed up. Any opposed? Aye. Uh, that would be two then. Alderman Kittleson, Alderman Verhassel. And Verhassel, okay. Thank you. I apologize for that. Next on the agenda is item to adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you all for coming on such a nice night.